Much of the focus on COVID-19 testing has been on tests that can determine whether someone is actively infected with the novel coronavirus. But in his drive to open up America again, President Donald Trump has turned his attention to blood-based antibody tests. This will help us assess the number of cases that have been asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic and support our efforts to get Americans back to work by showing us who might have developed the wonderful, beautiful immunity. The tests do have the potential to relay valuable information about who might already have immunity and how widely COVID-19 has spread. But it's not known yet if antibodies protect people from reinfection, and many tests have not worked as advertised. What are antibodies and antibody tests? Antibodies are proteins that specifically recognize pathogens and help clear the body of invading microbes. Because they're highly specific and bind to certain features of a pathogen, it's possible to design tests that can fish them out and say whether a person's blood contains them. Since it takes a while for the immune system to make antibodies, they're not a good indicator of whether someone is actively infected with COVID-19. But because some antibodies persist for months or years after someone has recovered, they offer a glimpse into the past and can reveal whether someone was previously infected, potentially even if that person never had symptoms. How accurate are COVID-19 antibody tests? Poor accuracy has plagued many of the first tests that companies developed. The UK, for instance, spent $20 million on antibody tests from China that the government subsequently found were not accurate enough to use. An emergency room in Laredo, Texas, also dropped half a million dollars on tests from China that were too unreliable to deploy. Some tests may falsely detect antibodies to other coronaviruses, including those that cause common colds. Tests, too, may not be sensitive enough to detect SARS-CoV-2 antibodies for the novel coronavirus when they are present, producing false negatives. In one preliminary evaluation, nine commercially available rapid tests were found to miss as many as 35% to 45% of samples that were positive. The tests generally produced fewer false positives, 7% or less, but even that performance may not be good enough, especially if the tests are used in a population in which few people have been infected. For example, with such a test, if only 1% of people contracted COVID-19, up to 89% of the positive results would be wrong. What's the status of COVID-19 antibody tests in the U.S.? For most people, antibody tests are not yet available, although numerous companies are now making them, and some cities are beginning to roll out tests to determine how many people in the community have already been infected. As of April 27th, the FDA has given an Emergency Use Authorization, or EUA, to eight antibody tests and has allowed many more tests onto the market. But no test has been fully vetted or FDA approved. While some of the tests may prove to work well, Ranga Sampav, the chief scientific officer of the nonprofit Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics, said there was little data to go on right now. There are perhaps a handful of tests that may be on the border of being good enough, but we don't know, he said. And we don't know that because we only have the manufacturer's claim. Experts are also skeptical that companies will be able to meet the demand for antibody tests anytime soon. Will someone be protected from being infected again if they have antibodies to the virus? It's quite likely that someone with SARS-CoV-2 antibodies will have some degree of immunity to the virus because it's a sign the body has seen and responded to the pathogen before. It's also typical of most viruses that spark short-term infections. Scientists nevertheless caution that protection is not a given. Lisa Grilinski, a virologist who studies human coronaviruses at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, said immunity would be very likely, but because the virus is new, and there isn't direct evidence yet, it can't be known for certain. In an April 24th scientific brief, the World Health Organization advised against issuing so-called immunity passports to people who test positive on antibody tests, since there has yet to be any study showing that antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 prevent a second infection in humans. How long might someone be immune to COVID-19? Scientists can't know with any certainty how long someone who contracted COVID-19 might be protected, but they can look to other human coronaviruses for clues. In one experiment with a common cold coronavirus, some volunteers who were intentionally infected became infected again after a year, although many did not develop noticeable symptoms. Other studies of patients infected with SARS in 2003 found that antibodies stick around in most people for two years, but are undetectable in about a quarter of patients by year three. 
and at year six, almost no one has any left. Mark Lipsitch, epidemiologist and director of Harvard's Center for Communicable Disease Dynamics, said, Reasonable guesses are that on the short end, there might be partial protection for about a year uh, or close to a year. Um, and on the long end, it might be longer, you know, it might be several years of good protection, but, but it, it's really speculative at this point.